We're going to look at data and how we can present it. To start with, we have two types of data, qualitative and quantitative. Now qualitative is about colors, smells, changes, things that we observe. Whereas quantitative is about numbers. It was 12 degrees Celsius, etc. We graph quantitative data. We graph numbers. That kind of makes sense. Now there are two types of quantitative data. Before we can ever present it in a graph, we have to figure out what type of data we have. There is discrete data and there is continuous data. Discrete data is where you have a value such as left-handed and right-handed. You could have a number of each of those, 4 left-handed, 12 right-handed. Whereas continuous data is where you have a full range of numbers. Now depending on your type of data, it will affect the type of graph that you produce. If you have discrete data, you cannot have a line. Because if you have a line on your graph, that suggests this is twice as far out as this. This is three times as far out. We've got a numerical relationship going this way. There is no numerical relationship between left-handed and right-handed. They are different things. So we have to make a graph that shows that. We would use bars. Now we could do this, but again, it's not correct. Even when I add label and unit, labels, title, still not correct. Are left-handed and right-handed totally different things? Left-handed and right-handed are different things. So maybe not totally different, but we had a gap in the middle. That gap tells us these are discrete. They are different things. As soon as you put the gap, that tells us that. Now our second type of data is continuous data. For continuous data, we do have a numerical relationship along our x-axis. Twice as far out is usually twice as much. If we go two, when we get to four, it's twice as far out. We get to six, should be three times as far out. We have a label, unit, label, unit. We make a graph, we don't want all data, that's silly. In science, we want a trend, we want a pattern. So if I said I recorded this data, I look at that data at the end, I could join the dots. In nature, is it likely we've got a pattern like that? Bit silly, I think. We would make a graph like this and then put in a line of best fit. Does that represent my data quite well? Quite well, could probably be a bit through the middle more. Does that represent it better? I think so. Luckily, if we don't want to think, we can tell a computer to do this. But any good piece of science, as soon as you look at a graph, you know what type of data it is. Each dot here represents an average that we've calculated. This is not all my data. Like in any science, I only graph my averages. Now there's one more situation with continuous data. And that is, for example, if I measure heights of people. You're not going to draw a graph and have height, who, and have this person was this height and this person was this height and this doesn't tell us anything. What we need to do instead is to break our data into categories where we'd have how many people are 1 to 1 1.2 meters. How many people are 1.2 to 1.4? How many people are 1.4 to 1.6 meters? Who's 1.6 to 1.8 meters? There's a problem here. If you're 1.2, can you be in that group and that group? You can't be in two groups. Science doesn't work. We need to add math signs in there to less than. Now you're only in one group. We can make a count. Now we can graph this. We can have our heights. In this case, we do bars, but they touch each other to show that it's continuous data. Of course, this graph's not complete. We still need to describe what it is, add our units, describe what this is, number of people, and a good describing title. Now while we graph only our averages, or in this case, our totals for each category, of course in your data table, you'd have all of your raw data, as well as the count, the total, or the average. You'll notice I've made a mistake here. That should be 1.6 to less than 1.8 meters. 